Hey guys, welcome back to Dasker Discusses. Well, I'm going to give you guys my spoiler-free review on the Netflix hit at the moment, starring Adam Sandler, Uncut Gems. Let's do this. Uncut Gems stars Adam Sandler playing Howard Ratner in this very interesting film, I must say. And I remember this is a non-spoiler review, so I'm not going to give away any major, major things, but Put it to you this way, whenever you say, oh yeah, have you seen a new Adam Sandler movie that's happened in the last couple of weeks or I've been talking to friends, they're like, oh, I'm not watching an Adam Sandler movie. Every movie he's made recently has been trash. But look, I thought I'd give it a chance because I heard a lot of things about Uncut Gems and I'll tell you what, it was quite an experience. And let me put it to you this way, just briefly, the storyline goes around this. Adam Sandler plays Howard Ratner. He's a jewelry store guy in New York, runs a jewelry store. And he's a big, big gambler. He's into his bets, putting bets here and there all the time, big stakes. He's always taking these big risks. And he gets his hands on a major, major uncut gem from an Ethiopian mine. And what's interesting about it is that you've got some good, pretty cool cameos, the, the weekends in it, only for a little bit as well. but. A big thing if you're into basketball, Kevin Garnett's in it from um, Boston and uh, he plays a pretty vital role to the movie as well and seeing how Adam Sandler or Howard in, you know, in the film, how he goes about just basically with this story goes about putting on these bets and having this major gem that Kevin Garnett is like obsessed with. He kind of thinks that it's kind of like got this magical power and decides to borrow it off Howard, our key character and then from there, you've got things that um, basically Howard's owing a lot of money to a lot of people all around town. And I'll tell you what, this film is just brilliantly edited, brilliantly shot, and Adam Sandler plays a really good role where I think he could have gotten a nomination for this um, in the Best Actor category. After seeing it, I'm like, I don't know how he didn't. But it wasn't only that, it was his other characters as well, the other characters in it that actually make it. There's all these different kind of, you know, I don't want to spoil it, but different kind of people that he owes money to, other mob bosses, other people, people that he knows, family, etc, etc. And as the movie goes on, I could feel like my heartbeat, you know, <laughs> it was actually, it got a bit stressful at times and not in terms of anxiety, but I reckon the last half an hour of the film are amazing uh, in terms of like where the pacing goes and how the film goes and you're actually waiting to see what actually happens in the end. but. It all comes down to storytelling, it all comes down to structure and caring about the characters and, and seeing what happens, which is why this is such a good film, because it's it's a lot different to what you've seen on Netflix in terms of, um, I don't know, there's been a lot of, you know, weird kind of serial killer documentaries and, and films like that as well, but this comes out of left field. It reminded me a lot of a Guy Ritchie film, especially Snatch, a bit of Lockstock in there, and of course, the classic Scarface, not that there's any kind of drugs involved with it, but just that kind of like high stakes, high octane kind of film where anything can happen at any point. So the good parts for me were obviously Adam Sandler, the storyline how it keeps progressing to this point where it just, it's just fueled with just quick fast paced editing, some slower scenes, and then you've got a lot of things that are at stake. It's kind of like, feels like you're there with Adam Sandler putting these big bets on, and you know, if you know anyone is into like, um, you know, gambling and such as that, they'll really enjoy it. But this takes that whole darker view of it where at points it does get extremely dark, but at the same time, it's got some really good humor in it that I was, I was laughing a lot. Now the bad points, not so much bad points, but the parts that, you know, I, I was a bit iffy about were, I know it sounds ridiculous, but definitely the soundtrack. There was just something about the soundtrack I didn't like. It was a bit too, I don't know, like this, kind of 80s synthesizer kind of soundtrack which didn't really fit for me that well. That was the one issue I had with that. And the other little one which again I'm not going to like get into too much detail because it's going to spoil a lot is maybe the last five minutes of the film I just thought you know it was kind of mind-blowing at the same time and kind of like wow did that just happen? So maybe the ending I felt wasn't the strongest point. Now, people probably don't agree with it, but for me, I'm just like, oh, really? Really? Okay, cool. But, like I said, la like said, I'm not spoiling anything, but yeah, the soundtrack and just a bit near towards the end was some little parts where I think could have been managed a bit better. But apart from that, wow, it is a great film that you sh if you've got Netflix to definitely put it on your watch list, have a look at it. I'm gonna give Uncut Gems a solid eight and a half out of 10. 
Yeah, that's what it deserves. An eight and a half out of ten. So let me know what you thought in the comments after you watch it. If you've seen the movie, let me know what you thought in the comments. Um, like this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Daska Discusses. Boom.